Hey friends, I know I told you that April is um, library month and I was going to be reading some library related books. So I decided to tell you the story called Little Libraries, Big Heroes. It's about how the free little libraries got started. You know how you um, walk around in the neighborhood. I'm sure you've seen a lot of free little libraries in people's yards. You might even have one in your yard. Um, and this is a, a biography, which is the story um, of somebody's life. And this is the man who thought of free little libraries, and now they're super popular. I can't wait to have one in my yard. I used to have one in my old school, and wouldn't it be great to have one at our school? I would love that. Okay, so this is by Miranda Paul, illustrated by John Para. Little libraries, big heroes. I have found some really amazing books in some of these free little libraries also. And there's a cute one, looks kind of like a school. I like it. For thousands of years, people have loved stories about heroes, mythical heroes, historical heroes, and even, these are great illustrations, aren't they? Ordinary heroes, like this guy, Todd, pretty ordinary, right? He probably didn't realize he was gonna be a hero. In school, he didn't feel heroic. Even though his mother had been a teacher who loved books, reading was difficult for him. He was often scolded for asking too many questions and was told he wasn't a good student. Oh, sorry, I missed this part. It says, here's kid Todd pretending to be a superhero. Todd's mom disagreed. She told him that he was gifted and had something big to offer the world. You could do anything, she said. He hoped she was right. Todd studied hard, graduated from school, and got a job. At work, Todd discovered he liked helping others. But then his mother died, and he became the one who needed help to get through sad times. He missed her terribly. Memories of his mom teaching neighborhood kids how to read gave Todd an idea. He cut up an old door and hammered the pieces together to make a tiny one-room schoolhouse. He stacked books inside, nailed a sign on the front, and placed the little library on his lawn. Now he could share his mother's love of reading with anyone who passed by. There was just one problem. Very few people passed by. It's a really nice way to honor his mom, isn't it? And when he did this, there wasn't anything. There were not no free little libraries, so this is the first one. This is where it came from. One day, during a rummage sale, Todd's neighbor spotted his creation. Hey, did you build that yourself? What a neat idea. Why did you make it? Todd told them about his mom. People loved his story, and it reminded them of ordinary heroes they knew. Soon, neighbors who had never met before were gathered around, chatting like old friends. They grabbed books, they gave books, and the little library became the center of their neighborhood. One reason I like this story is because it is just about a regular person who had a great idea, and you will always have great ideas, and you can do great things too. And I just really like the way that his idea turned out to be so popular, and now we see these free little libraries all over the place. I think it's so great. There's nothing like sharing a book that you really like, right? Todd felt his nifty boxes of books had potential. He called up his friend Rick, who was always chock full of grand ideas. Rick thought that they could build thousands of little boxes, like Andrew Carnegie, who once built 2,510 libraries. So Andrew Carnegie was a really rich guy, and he built a bunch of libraries. And some of the libraries here in Portland are Carnegie libraries, and they're really beautiful. They could take trips, like Ludie Stearns, who brought traveling libraries all over Wisconsin. Wait a minute, Todd said. Andrew Carnegie had been a wealthy businessman. Ludie Stearns was a trained librarian. The two of them were just ordinary guys, and they were particularly low on cash. How many libraries could two ordinary guys create? How far could ordinary people spread an idea? They agreed on one thing. They wanted to find out. So, you know, sometimes people have a good idea and it's really easy to say, oh, I can't do that because I don't have any money. Oh, I can't do that because it's going to be hard. Oh, I can't do that. But they decided, you know what? It is going to be hard and we don't have any money, but we're going to try to do it anyway. That's what I like about them. For months, they salvaged, designed, sawed, and painted. They learned important skills such as how to recycle a barn, how to pick out a sliver, and how to convince family members that sewing and paint, sawing and painting were fun. The team lined up their finished masterpieces and waited for the crowds, but crowds didn't come. 
Only one person bought a little library. The freshly built library sat and sat and sat. Oh man, I would have bought one. It's a bummer to work really hard and then have it not nobody come and appreciate it, but at least they sold their first one. The team spirit withered as they waited. Books are filled with great ideas they knew, but those ideas could only spread if people actually read them. So Todd and Rick decided that if people wouldn't come get the libraries, they'd bring the libraries to the people. Out they went with 30 tiny libraries, planting them like seeds between Madison, Chicago, and Minneapolis. Just like at the rummage sale, folks gathered around. Curiosity lured readers to the little boxes, and they borrowed and shared books. That's cool. So they decided, since no one bought them, that they would just put them out for free. And that's a great way to get the word out. Friends and neighbors talked with other friends and neighbors who talked with more friends and neighbors about the books they'd read and where they'd gotten them. It was working. The seeds of Todd and Rick's idea were beginning to grow. A radio interview spread the word about the free little libraries all over Wisconsin. Then a national TV show featured their idea. The whole country seemed to be buzzing about the tiny anything but ordinary libraries. Isn't that a great idea? I just think this is such a great idea. I take a lot of walks, and I see so many great free little libraries in our area. It's really fun. Over the next year, 400 little libraries sprang up across the United States. Each library needed a caretaker called a steward. Stewards were ordinary citizens. Some were even kids. Many of them wouldn't stay ordinary, though. They became community heroes. After Hurricane Katrina devastated her hometown of New Orleans, a six-year-old girl named Nikki collected nearly 2,000 books. She gave a box of books to every little free library in the city. Then she wrote a letter to Todd and Rick's organization asking for a little library of her own, and she got one. Nikki tucked some of her favorite books inside, and people have been checking out stories from it ever since. I love that. That's a great idea. So Hurricane Katrina was a huge hurricane that happened in Louisiana, in New Orleans, Louisiana. And at the time, I still lived in Texas, and a lot of people from Louisiana came to Austin and um, it was really terrible. So I love to hear a happy story that somebody did to help people recover. In El Paso, which is in Texas, near the U.S.-Mexico border, reading programs were short on money. A librarian named Mrs. Lopez placed the first free little library in Texas at an elementary school there. Where their students helped, the idea spread to more than 50 locations around the city. Soon, families had more access to books in English and Spanish. In western Uganda, which is in Africa, volunteers set up a primary school and a little free library within a refugee camp. So that's cool. Now it's spreading around the world. The women, men, and children who lived there had escaped great violence and had been forced to leave most of their possessions behind. Some of them learned to read from the magazines and picture books they found inside the tiny library. Oh, that makes me feel so hopeful. I love that. It also makes me feel a little teary-eyed. As the library spread around the world, more tales of ordinary heroes emerged. From within a Wisconsin prison, along a hiking trail in Canada and cities across Brazil, stewards placed free little libraries at a hospital in Ireland, on a street corner in Pakistan, and outside a house in South Korea near the schoolyard in, in, and a schoolyard in South Sudan. So these are places that are all over the world. Because everybody likes to read, no matter where they live. When you read, you get access to information, and that gives you power. Today, thousands of ordinary and creative heroes are bringing millions of free books to their friends and neighbors. Today, those neighbors and friends will share them with other neighbors and friends. Today, books will be loved, big ideas will spark, and tomorrow... So look at all these people reading and the things that they're reading about. Who knows? Tomorrow might bring another hero story written by you and shared with the whole world, the whole wide book-loving world. That's true. Maybe you'll grow up to be an author. So I've told you before, all really good nonfiction books will have information in the back. And this is the author's note that talks about <clears throat> how they got the idea to write the book and just some more information, how they did their research. And... Um, so it says that um, Todd, the one who started the book, unfortunately died a couple of years ago. It doesn't say why. But he was the one who started the book. I mean, started the Free Law Library, which I think is really, really great. I'm gonna, I haven't read this part yet, so I'm going to read it myself. If you want more information, you can check out this book and read it yourself. 
And here it gives you some websites to look at. And um, yeah, so like I said, nonfiction gives you lots of more information. I hope you enjoyed the story. And I really like these end papers showing the books. All right, friends, happy reading.